Hey, this is Barack Lemires, and in this video, I'm going to go over lab 8.1 on using arrays and also the voltage divider circuit. Okay. So the purpose of this is just for you to, you know, get real, get more experience with arrays. Uh, but we'll do it with an application for an electrical circuit. And you should be able to create a series of arrays, multiple arrays, and populate the arrays with values from calculations um, and fill them with a predefined step distance between them. And then at the end, I want you to call a function with an array as one of its inputs and find the maximum value in that array. So that's something we've done before, uh, but you'll use it in this lab. Okay, you're gonna basically upload a couple screenshots of your your outputs, your outputs are just going to be stream or printed to the screen and your source code. And so let's now think about what we are doing in this lab. This is an electrical circuit. This has a voltage source, which is a DC voltage, meaning it's just a flat volt. It can be nine volts coming out of a battery. It can be 12 volts coming out of a, another battery, <laughs> but it's just like flat. It's just like for all time, it sits there. These are resistors. Okay. We've learned about Ohm's law. Uh, this is a resistor. We'll call it R1. This is a resistor called R2. It turns out that if you put these resistors in this configuration, you will have current I that will flow in a continuous loop around it in this direction. And it also turns out that if you wanted to calculate the voltage across R2, you could do that using this equation right here. V out is equal to V in multiplied by R2 divided by R1 plus R2. That comes from using some circuit analysis techniques that you'll learn about when you take circuits, uh, but it's not terrible. It's basically combinations of Ohm's law and a couple laws called Kirchhoff's current and voltage law. And that's what you learn about later. But for now, we can just say, you know, give me the answer. I want to know the answer of what V out is with respect to the input voltage and the values of the two resistors. The I that flows around the circuit can also have an expression that can be derived from these equations that you don't know yet. <laughs> and it's given by Vn, R1, and R2. Notice that these are our variables, right? R1 is a variable, R2 is a variable, and Vn is a variable. And then we get different values for V out and I based upon those, those parameters. Then you can also find P out, which is actually relatively simple and we've done it before. The power out of a resistor is essentially, uh, well, power out by definition is I times V out. So if you want to know what the power dissipated in this resistor was, it would simply be I through it multiplied by the voltage across it. And that's P out. And that's just the definition. So here's kind of what we want to do today. What I'd like to do is I'd like to prompt the user for a voltage. Okay, so say, what is your, what's your voltage? Is it five volts? Is it nine volts, etc. And then what I want to do, we'll prompt the user for R1. Okay, and so we'll, and we'll, we'll say, you know what, give me a value between like 10 and 100, just to kind of bound the problem. Then what I want you to do is I want you to set up an array that will hold values for R2, but I want them to be like a sweep. So like from 10 up to 100, I want you to fill an array with multiple values of R2. And then I want you to go through and I want you to calculate the current, the voltage out and the power out for the all the values in R2 using Vn, which was entered, and R1, which was entered. So these two are gonna be fixed values. But remember, you have these equations. Well, if you have a whole bunch of values of R2 that you sweep, you're gonna have a whole bunch of values for V out and P out and I that correspond to the resistance values of R2. So that's where you need arrays. We're gonna have an array to hold the sweeps, the sweep of R2. We're gonna hold an array, you need an array to hold the corresponding values of V out for each of those values and P out for each of those values and I for all those values. Okay, all right, so here's what we're gonna do. We've already kind of seen using pound define in time series, uh, but, well, well, you will, but we're going to use this pound define to create what we call macros. These are in the preprocessor section of your of your program above the main. And basically what these are is you can assign a number to a label and then anywhere in your program that you put this label, it will replace it with the value. And this is how you can make make something that, you know, make your code more readable. And then you can change a value that 
reflects or propagates through without having it be a variable. So these are not variables. These are just basically substitutions. Uh, what you're going to do is create one called R2 min, R2 max, and endpoints, and you're going to assign them these values. R2 min is going to be the starting value of your sweep. R2 max is going to be the ending value of your sweep. And endpoints is the number of points in the sweep. Okay, so if you had 10, if you had these values right here, you'd basically have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Okay, so that's what you would do. All right, life is good. <laughs> okay, so now we have that. You're gonna basically create a program and it's gonna look like this. You're gonna have your header, you're gonna have standard IO, you'll have your pound defines, and you're gonna have a little function that goes here that you'll calculate and then you're gonna have a main variable, uh, main function. And what I want you to do is set up a variable for VN of double, make it a type of double. Uh, this is gonna be provided by the user. You're gonna set up another variable for R1 that's going to be a, fix, a value that the user provides. Then you're going to create a variable that is an array for R2. And it's going to hold doubles, but it's going to have n points in it that are given to you by your pound define above. You're going to create a variable of R2 step, which is going to be used to populate this array. You'll create an array for i, an array for v out, an array for p out, and they will all have the same number of elements as R2. And then you're gonna create one final value called P max I and D. And this is gonna hold, once you're all said and done, you're gonna go through the array for power and you're gonna find the maximum value. And instead of just reporting what the maximum value is, you'll pop out, you'll do this with a function, you will actually just return its index, okay? And it'll be of type int. Once you know its index, you can say, hey, the maximum power occurred at this index and then you can provide the power in the array by using that index to access the array all stuff we've done before okay so you're going to basically say the following here's what you're going to do welcome to the voltage divider calculator enter a value for vn and then enter a value for r1 but between 10 and 100 okay first thing you got to do is you got to populate your array okay so r2 needs to have if we had 10 elements you need to go through and you need to populate the array all right, so you're gonna have a little calculation, which is going to basically say R2 max minus R2 min divided by N points minus one. And that'll allow you to basically fill this array using a for loop, okay? Then you're going to create a for loop that'll fill the I array. And that's just a simple calculation that we had above. And, and it's simple, okay? Then you're gonna create a for loop that'll populate the V out array. Then you'll create a for loop that will populate the P out, okay? And you do, do these separately. It'll just be very simple. And do them in the main program, okay? And the reason you're going to do that is because we haven't covered a way to pass an array to a, a function yet and have that every element in that array altered. We have only figured out how to, or we've only covered how to pass the array and then return a single value. We haven't learned how to pass an array and also manipulate that array. We'll do that once we get to pointers. So you have to do these with for loops. So you can do this in the main program. So I, V out, and P out, separate for loops, pretty simple. At the end though, you're gonna create a function to find the maximum index of P out. And you'll pass the P out array in, you'll pass in end points of course, and all you're gonna do is, is walk through that array and find the maximum value. And we've done that before. But you're gonna return the index, not the value. Return the index in this array that holds that maximum value, okay? And then I want you to print everything out. So here's what it's gonna look like. You're gonna make this nice table. <laughs> you're gonna have these headers up here. This is all gonna be done with printf statements and you're gonna use tabs and spaces, whatever it takes to make this nice. I want you to print the index out for each element that we have. So the index right here. Then you're gonna print VN. You just print, it's a static value, but you'll print it at each at each row just to make it so we understand. Then you're gonna print R1. Again, that's a static value that was provided by the user. Then you're gonna print R2, which is a sweep value. Okay, so that goes from 10 to 100. And that's in an array. And then you're gonna print the current you calculated, the voltage you calculated, and the power out you calculated. All right, then you will, you will return a sentence that says, where or what index resulted in the maximum power, but you're gonna do it like this. The max P out equals this. You will use the index to access the value in this P out array that holds the maximum power. 
The reason you found its index was because then you're going to report the actual value of R2 and R1 that corresponded to that maximum power. That's why you find the index. So it's going to be a sentence like this. Okay. All right. So that's what it's going to look like. All right. Let, let me show you mine in, in action here. So let me clear this up. Here's what mine looks in action. So I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to run this thing. It's like enter a value for VN. I'm going to run our 12. Enter a value for R1 between 10 and 100. I'm going to do 25. And here we go. You've got, I'm running this 25 points right now. You'll do that too. So look at it. Index 0 to 24. VN, I entered 12. R1, 25. And then R2, look at the sweep. Kind of interesting. I, I didn't went from 10 to 100, but I did it uh, across 25 points. Not a big deal because you use that equation to calculate R step. Current, voltage, power. And then it said the max P out, which was 1.44. And it's like, is that right? And it's like, yeah, that's right. It's right there. That seems like the largest one happened when R1 was 25 and R2 was 25. Interesting. All right, let's do it again. Let's do, let's, let's bring in like uh, nine volts this time and let's do a resistor value of 50. Okay, so here's our values. And you're gonna look through and it says, oh, the maximum power occurred at four, times 10 to the negative one. So 4.049, it's like, yeah, that looks like about the biggest one. And it said that that happened when R1 was 50 and R2 was 51.2, interesting. All right, let's do one last time. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this again. Let's do 120 volts and let's do 90 ohms. So here's my table again, 90 right there. Here's my sweep and here's my current voltage power out. And my sentence at the bottom says, the maximum power is four, it was actually 40 watts that occurred when R1 was 90, R2 was 88.8. So you look at this and you're like, okay, where is that? That looks about right. I mean, that looks like the biggest value. And yeah, it happened when those two were right there and life is good. So you're going to provide, you're going to have test cases. Okay. So test case one is going to be N points 10. That's a, your pound defined macro. You just change it. Enter 12 volts in, enter R1 equals 50 and look at what the output is. Then do another test case where endpoints equals 10, but enter 5 volts for the supply, 25 for R1. And then do test case 3 where you change it to endpoints equals 25, and then enter in 3.4 and 75 ohms. And here's what you're going to notice, okay? You'll notice that in no matter what, no matter what the voltage is, no matter what happens, is that the maximum power occurs when R1 is equal to R2, okay? Or as close as I can get. And that doesn't matter. If it doesn't matter in this case where it's 75 and about 75, doesn't matter if it's this one, 25 and about 25, and this one, 50 and 50. The only reason that these tests down here are different, it's not exactly 25, is because we don't have as many points. If you made this like a 10,000 points, they would be exactly. And that happens to be called the maximum power transfer theorem. Just happens to be it. We observed it. You don't have to, you don't have to remember that, but it's just interesting that that just happens to be what happens in this voltage divider. All right. Good luck.